Have you been playing Hearts of Iron 4 since release, sinking thousands of hours into this game, buying multiple DLCs, and yet you have completely forgotten one feature that's staring you right in the face every time you go to play? That's right, the credits. Let's give them a watch, shall we? No, just kidding. Uh, sorry, Peter. Don't care. No, in fact, I meant that when you go to play a new game, there's this mysterious button right next to the start thing called August 1939. Paradox Ground Strategy games are known for their multiple start dates. They've kind of shied away from it now because as the game goes on, these later start dates uh, tend to get more and more broken. Uh, not naming any games in particular, but try going any random date in EU4 and try and have fun. That's all I'm going to say. But back in 2016, the uh, 1939 start date probably didn't look too bad. Again, I would not know. I don't think I've ever actually done it. <laughs> uh, now, in Hoi 4, though, there is a reason to do the 1939 start date because there are achievements that you can accomplish by doing so, specifically the Poland one where you need to hold out. But if you're looking for the most fun in the game, usually you just start from 1936 because even if you don't have a great computer, the start of the game runs so fast you'll be caught up in no time anyway. Uh, you know, Everything past 39 tends to be a massive lag fest if you're little Boris down there in Serbia running on your laptop from 2005. Yeah, but today we're gonna go have a little look at the 1939 start date and see just how possible it is to play. All right, so I'm not gonna play as Germany, I think it'll still be too easy, but I do want to quickly just have a little look at their stuff, uh, because Paradox did actually code in some different things for the start of the game in terms of tech equipment and uh, starting lineups. Uh, yeah, so one of the big downsides to actually playing in the 39 is uh, most of the historical focuses have already been selected, uh, which means in terms of just how much gameplay you've missed out on, uh, if you were to say play Turkey, don't worry, you still have 500 more years to get to the fun parts. Interestingly enough, with new nations added through the DLC, it does look like they have updated their focus trees to actually go down a, um, I guess, historical path line for the most of them. I was honestly half expecting them to not even bother, but uh, yeah, I guess they, they did see the uh, foresight in doing this. Alright, let's have a look at the German tech. Uh, we haven't done any of that. We've done a little bit of that. Wait, we haven't done anything. We've essentially done like no... Okay, we did a lot of industry tech. Uh, it makes sense historically for the most part, I guess. Uh, a little interesting thing though, because I doubt anyone has ever actually seen this. Uh, but if you actually go to your outdated equipment, uh, they have actually bothered to add the JU-86 as a variant out here, which is fully upgraded. Um, not that it matters, because a single tack one is way better than it, but it is interesting to see. Uh, like, you would never even see this normally unless you click this button, so someone, I guess, was having a bit of a, a, a boring day at work. As for our little tanks here, not much to see. We have the Panzer IV, Panzer III, and definitely uh, our own made, definitely not stolen Panzer 38T, 100% German made. Oh, we're also producing the Graf Zeppelin down here, which, again, if you're into your history, the Graf Zeppelin, something the Germans actually attempted to make didn't go too well. Yeah, other than that, not too much to see. I am going to play in the start date. I just want to have a look around for more little weird stuff before we get going. I was impressed for a second. Then. I was like, the French have heavy tanks starting off? They do, they do in fact, have some. Uh... Template's not looking too good, though. Ah, uh, they do have the, uh, the Shah B1, but they don't have the Shah 2C, which, uh, is the French World War One tank that they were still using, uh, in, in World War II. Um, sure. not a lot of them. I think they only had a couple, and they didn't do too well. In fact, I think the Germans captured them. Uh, I think this actually might be the regiment that the, uh, the Shah 2Cs were actually under, so I guess they're kind of represented in the way, but it is a Shah. B1 biz, come on bro, what the hell. Alright, just going through the UK stuff now, I noticed that they do start the Spitfire, very cool. Uh, we also have the Matilda 2 tank, very good tank at the start of the war. Yeah, very, very good armor tank, that bad boy, at least it was at the start of the war. Shells would pop off it like nothing, uh, until they didn't, and then the Germans started laughing at it. I just want to clarify that is, <laughs> that is definitely not a Matilda 2. <laughs> Alright, for the rest of the weed stuff, it is kind of interesting, we have the, uh, the Albacore already, which 
which is kind of hilarious. I think it was meant to replace the uh, swordfish in history, which uh, I'm sure everyone knows the swordfish, right? Famous for Will Smithing the uh, rudder of the Bismarck. It's kind of weird because I'm pretty sure the uh, the swordfish may have actually outlasted its supposed replacement, which <laughs> again kind of funny. As for that, there's not much else to see here. Just a ton of boats being produced by the British. Not surprising there. The Italians they got the L35 right here. Look at this bad boy. <laughs> All five soft attack, which I think honestly is a bit too generous. Yeah, these things uh they they weren't that great. I think they actually got used a lot, uh, just being like police units and uh, just garrisons, I think. They, uh, they, yeah, they did do too great. Uh, but that's enough dilly-dallying around looking at uh, what everyone has. I did look at a few more, but I didn't see anything too interesting for uh, other countries. So, uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to play today is the UK. Oh, God, this is going to be such a mess. Just look at the strength of my units, too. What actual templates do we have here? Okay. That's... What? <laughs> Well, that's not much better. Okay, the infantry is not that bad. This could be upgraded okay, and the rest is pretty useless. I mean, the motorized is good. Always good to have some motorized. I don't understand um, particularly why I have two of the exact same motorized, though, but thank you very much. And for tech, we have a lot of good tech. Uh, I wouldn't really want to be undispersed. I never do dispersed, uh, especially as someone like the UK. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of good tech, I gotta say. All right, Paradox is nice enough to just give you a ton of political power too, so you can just move around all your starting stuff. So we're gonna send some of these guys off to Africa, and then we're gonna garrison Ethiopia with all of my colonials troops. Usually what I just do anyway in a normal UK run, so yeah. Yeah, I know it's uh, the British Navy and all, but have you ever thought that maybe this is too many boats Spread it. Right, and our industry is absolutely horrendous. We need to get a move on here. Now, interestingly enough, uh, we can actually still go our old history path if we really wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to do that um, because I don't really <laughs> want to start the chaos in 1939. <laughs> We're immediately being called to mobilize the economy. <laughs> well done, boys. Oh, quite. I think this whole Germany debacle is quite blown over, old chap. I mean, he did say he would wouldn't invade Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Where are they gone? No real time to sit around and do nothing. Unfortunately, you've got to join this thing called World War II. All right, so Poland's capitulated. The Poles are no more, and the Italians are at war. So what I'm going to try and do is just try a little meme and naval invade behind them. Uh, I got a whole load of casts and planes and air superiority in general, so uh, this should go well. Uh, my units, um, as you can see, aren't quite ready for combat, though, still. So, yeah, it's going to be a while. Well, I may just get it. There oh, there you go. Nice. Nice. Okay, so we just gotta hold them off each way here, and we should have pretty much all these frontline troops dead. We did our own little Operation Compass there, pretty handy. Uh, we've done Operation Compass, was a little operation the British did in North Africa before the Germans arrived, and they ended up capturing like a hundred thousand Italians. It was pretty intense. Yeah, they, they were having uh, a lot of fun down here and <laughs> until someone more competent showed up. All right, so we could try the exact same thing again, honestly. Uh, only problem is I don't have a lot of air to cut that area, so it'd be a bit of a gamble. Well, yeah, I don't think France is gonna last much longer. It's kind of a meme. I'm gonna try and naval invade this airport, then use that airport to bomb Benghazi when I, uh, try my naval invasion. That's right. <laughs> Yoink! God. <laughs> It worked. And another airport. I'm taking it. We needed some faster boys, so I just switched one to a motorized unit just to get the cut off here. And boom, there you go. There's some more Italian army dead. There you go. We managed to save our little rat boys that took the airport. Now, uh, the French uh, rejected my demand for them to, uh, you know, hand their navy over to the free French. So, um... It's going to the bottom of the Mediterranean. That one was a little tricky. Uh, a lot of my troops did just get caught by uh, some Italian submarines. Thankfully, my fleet came and scared them off. But uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not too sure if we're going to be able to rush down here quick enough to encircle essentially the rest of the Italian army over here. Uh, we got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, so the rest of the troops over here are now like dead. They're completely dead. I didn't realize that um, when the Belgians capitulate, they actually got the Congo too. I'm not even sure why. So I'm just going to uh, send all my submarines to go wreak complete havoc over here. 
here, which it should do nicely. Uh, then I'm gonna send uh, my actual home guard over to here too, and uh, go liberate Ethiopia. You just gotta remember all the troops I sent over here are just all my crappy, like, colonial ones, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> They're not gonna do too well. And I have just naval invaded around the Italians. Yep, yeah, and uh, unsurprisingly, Germany, uh, <laughs> Africa's not a good idea when you don't have naval supremacy. <laughs> Japan is also at war with me now, but I'm just gonna do what the British did IRL, which is, uh, just, uh, just look over here. Yeah, Barbarossa's happening too, that's nice. That should take some more pressure off Africa for us. So once I've, uh, mopped up the rest of these troops down here in Africa, what I want to do is just launch a massive, like, naval invasion across the north coast here and just wipe out all the Italians once and for all over here. Yeah, the Germans are just all dying of no supply, probably because of the endless submarine raids going on. I just got some Hungarian convoy. Right now, all these German troops are dead because they just technically got encircled. Well done, Germany. I get the feeling the Soviets probably don't have the best start in 1939 because they are doing too well at all. Alright, I assume I actually took quite a few losses myself there. Yeah, 500k, but how many did I do to them? So I did almost a million to the Germans and almost a million to the Italians. Pretty nice. Definitely a good trade-off. Now it's definitely time for Operation Ass Clap the Italians even more. I don't know where my units went. Uh, I just realized the French stole them to do a border war with Syria. Thank you, France. Alright, Operation Ass Clap is underway. God, no way did they capitulate this Soviets. Come on, bro! <laughs> Alright, we got our damn work cut out for us, that is for sure. So how did you get in Syria? Ain't no way in hell they're gonna see another naval invasion coming, right? They, in fact, did not see another naval invasion coming. Pies was still not even done fighting over here, because Vichy France just joined the war too! Oh, I think we're uh, finally time to strike back. Um... Sorry, India. Didn't really, uh, help you out much there, but we just got ourselves a very special little technology. Right, Italy, let's see how you like being endlessly naval invaded. I mean, I know how you like it, because, um, I've been doing it to you the entire game. I'm not gonna bother pushing any further into Italy. What I am gonna do, though, is immediately D-Day. Got my tanks ready, got my planes ready, and I got 15 nuclear bombs ready to deploy. Hey, you know, just, uh, just a casual little D-Day. Got myself... <laughs> 7 billion planes over Normandy. Oh god, just look at the horde coming in right now. <laughs> I mean, hey, I took my time, but if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. Mealy just gotta rebuild airports everywhere over France, because uh, I can't sustain this amount of planes just from the UK. Alright, and now is the time to strike down here. Ah! Mamma mia! That's a spicy pizza! Yeah. They, they didn't last too long after that. Of course, the icing on top and never invasion of Africa. MacArthur, baby, the loads, I'm dropping a heart and then hit. Yeah, I was about to say, look how many casualties the Germans have taken. Six million, two million, three, almost three million for the Italians. The Hungarians, one million. I right, but, uh... What the hell have you been doing, America? That's literally more than me, and I've just been non-stop throwing men around like they're nothing. Well, I imagine the Americans have probably been doing something very... Oh my god, you guys suck so bad. Well, there goes the Germans. Oh yeah, I just, uh... Now own all the Soviet Union. Uh, Japan's gonna go wild over there, but I'm just gonna have to come naval invade them, I think. Thankfully, the Americans never lost Iwo Jima, even though they gave up Hawaii. Alright! Oh, I can just take France. I'm gonna be nice, so I won't, I won't, uh, <laughs> take their land like the AI would. There you go, look at those beautiful borders. Wowzers. Uh, I also didn't care to, uh, manually take every single one of these, uh, Russian provinces, so I just liberated Stalin back. Welcome to the world, Stalin. And, uh, you, you've got the Germans in you for some reason. Oh, thank you, America. All right, Japan, Japan, J I think I'm just gonna invade the mainland from Iwo Jima. This is, uh, let's take them a little bit. Let's, uh, squeeze the wheels on this invasion a little bit, shall we? I'm, uh, real big fan of those Japanese cartoons. Oh, oh, no, do I have to, yeah, uh, the Soviet... I didn't even know you guys were at war. <laughs> Why did I release them? In fact, I'm not, I'm not even at war with them, am I? 
How does this work? Can I- wait, do I just have to take out China then? Yeah, I would much prefer not to be uh, involved in the uh, Soviet war. So, you guys just don't call me in. Don't bring me in. Soviets, don't join this war, please. Let me just finish China and we're done. Yeah, I also just called the Portuguese in to uh, use their little port down here to uh, <laughs> speed this up. Uh, they capitulated, but uh, no peace still. I guess I actually do have to go to war with the Soviets, but that's the first time I've ever seen this happen before. Usually, you just get a peace conference right now, but, uh... Okay, guess I gotta deal with this crap. Yeah, don't worry about that, India. I just, uh, forgot you existed for a while, so, uh, welcome back to the world! I'm, I'm only invading you because it's on the way back to Europe where I need to go fight the Soviets. Oh, <laughs> my bad. I just nuked Leningrad, uh, when <laughs> the French naval invaded it. <laughs> we probably should have coordinated that a little better, all right? I, um, I don't even care. I'll just see what the AI does. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's... <laughs> That's what the AI does. Oh, uh, I think we are well and truly done here. That was the 1939 start in Hearts of Iron 4, as you can see. Pretty chaotic, but a lot of fun, actually. Um, I, I did have loads and loads of fun just constantly beating up the Italians. Hey, if you want to brave the 39 start yourself, feel free to do it. Let me know how it goes in the comments down below. It'd be very interesting to see if you can find any more weird stuff like I did as well in terms of, like, tech or units. Uh, very interesting. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe button down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.